Hello friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to bring you kind of a three-in-one holiday review today. We're gonna to be talking about some of the new holiday items from Tarte. Um, these are the ones I initially picked up. Um, there will be some more trickling in as time goes on, but I definitely wanted to try out their blush palette, their four-piece lip set, and then also they have a two palette set that I really was intrigued by. So I've been playing around with these for a couple of weeks now and I feel like I'm ready to give a review to you and I join you also with just a partially done face because I'm going to be adding to it with these products. So I've got my Merit Stick. This is the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick in the shade Bone and this is both my foundation and then also my concealer. I just build it where I'm wearing it as concealer. So I've got that on. I set that with a little bit of Kosas Cloud Set Powder and then I did my brows and that's it. So we're gonna jump into this palette, this gorgeously packaged face palette here. I absolutely love that kind of prismatic lid. It's so pretty, I love the color. It's called Precious Gems Amazonian Clay Cheek Palette. And something I'm kind of noticing with both this and the eyeshadow palettes is a more like permanent vibe to this stuff in a way. Even though we know it's a holiday limited edition product, it's feeling less Christmassy, and also the packaging of these palettes, it just makes you think more of something that's available all the time, as opposed to some kind of real novelty packaging or something completely different than what they usually put out. You know, this makes you think of the type of packaging Tarte would normally make. You know, you've got a nice solid mirror there, and then there's your product. So I do kind of like that. It's like you're getting holiday, but yet you feel a little bit more like you're getting something that's well within the scope of what Tarte makes, not like some parade periphery item. You know what I mean? So in here we have these blushes and a bronzer. This is the Park Avenue Princess Bronzer. And then the blushes you're getting are Polished, Refined. This one is called Facet. And then we have Gemstone and Luxe. Gemstone appears to be the only one that has some shimmer in it. The rest seem to be matte. And we have this kind of neutral shade that really does, you know, show up on the cheeks, I feel. A little more toasty color. The shimmery one has some peach. We've got a true pink and then more of a berry plum. I do like all the blush shades, but I'll tell you this, there will be some things coming out at holiday time face palette wise that do even more. And by even more, I mean they'll throw in a highlighter. Or if you're an hourglass palette, you're gonna put in sort of a finishing powder type of step. And it feels so much more all encompassing than this. And I feel like I would have been even happier if maybe they would have taken out like say this blush, since these are kind of close and this one has the different finish, you know, maybe throw in a highlighter and then that would have made this a three in one step instead of simply a two in one step with so many blushes. I mean, I'm a blush person, I really like blush, but four would still be a lot and then you throw in a highlighter, it could be even more versatile. So that's my one sort of gripe about this is seeing it in comparison to some of the other options you will have in terms of a holiday face palette but we're gonna go to the bronzer here which does have a little bit of a sheen and it's got that different like imprint there this sort of snakeskin type of vibe or you know what it really reminds me of is our dehydrated ground because we haven't had rain in what seems like weeks around here <laughs> it looks like cracked dry ground but I'm just gonna throw this on and it does definitely show on my skin I can kind of work it in as a contour it's not like a really loud super rich shade as you can see in there you know it's not incredibly dark I think it would work for a variety of skin tones however if you're super tan or rich you may not see this on your skin as much just be warned and a smart decision that I do think is being made by certain brands is to put out a face palette in multiple options. You know, Hourglass has stepped it up. Last year, they kind of put out two palettes simultaneously. You know, their ambient lighting face palettes, but then this year, they've upped it to three, and it really gives a lot more variety, and it really stretches the brand's chances of reaching, you know, more people who feel that that product can work for them. And with this, it could be a deeper bronzer and they could deepen up some of these other blushes and maybe make it something that's a little bit more deep skin friendly. Because if I'm like a light to medium skin tone and I'm saying, yeah, this bronzer is a little bit on the subtle side for me, it's not something that's gonna just flat out work for everyone. I think you can see what I'm doing with it here. I think it's showing up, but I am building it. And I will just say I have a really good face trio from Benefit that I can't wait to tell you about in a video. It's extremely right up my alley, that's all I can 
that's it. So we got the Park Avenue Princess Bronzer on. We're feeling like the skin's got a little more color now. I'm maybe gonna put on two of these blushes for you so you can see what's up. Let's do this one down here, the one called Lux, just because it might be a little harder for you to imagine the way that's gonna come off on the cheeks. It's gonna look a little rosier than you think, okay? Look at that. That's that blush right there. It definitely shows on the cheeks, but it's not even quite as neutral as you might imagine. To me, that's pretty rosy. You can really see it on the brush there. It's pretty. I do like these Tarte blushes. I feel like they have good staying power. If you're using one of the matte ones, it actually can make your skin look a little more flawless when you pop a matte blush on. It can kind of do some work on the pores, you know? Sometimes people don't think about blush having that effect, but it, we're applying it right in this zone. So that one I think is just a really pretty color, um, very like all purpose, works for anything. And then we can say, well, let's go a little deeper. Let's throw a little more flair on that. Let's use the one called Facet. Just get a little bit on there and maybe pop it right out here. I'm really trying to go light because I honestly didn't need more. But I can assure you I've used all these blushes. They all do really show up well on me. I'm pleased with the quality. I just wouldn't have minded maybe a highlighter in there or something that makes the palette even more versatile because as much as I like blush, I still feel like five in there is kind of like, okay, let's throw in something extra, something different. The palette exterior is still amazing. I love that. But the contents of the palette, I have to be honest with you, they're more of a like, not a love. Let's talk about this little palette duo here. Um, this is Gilded and this is Glamour, and they're both Amazonian clay eyeshadow palettes. Um, if you watched my review on the Maneater After Dark palette, same formula things are happening in here. Basically, in Maneater After Dark, they did some things with their shimmers. There are some that feel like downright creams in there. Not full-on like sticky creams, but they are walking a line with some of those shimmers and they might go on a little differently with your brush than you would expect. Um, I felt like in Tarte's long-standing palettes like the In Bloom or the Tartlet, Tartlet toasted that whole family of palettes. They had a really strong formula going with both their mattes and their shimmers. Their shimmers were just like standard texture shimmers where they were soft, they were easy to apply, you knew what was going to happen with them. There was no oddball feels like coming out of left feel. With the Maneater After Dark, they kind of changed that up, and they have committed to that in these palettes as well. You will see more than a few shimmers that really come off feeling like creams. And again, with the more permanent feel to these, just the size, the shape, the solid nature of the packaging, the fact that they didn't go and like, okay, now we're putting out something in a cardboard with a fold-out display and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's being kept more something that you might just continue to use for the long haul. You know what I mean? So an interesting thing about these, these are 18 shade palettes, so pretty substantial palette. You're getting two, and they've gone with totally different color schemes in each. So one is that berry, golden, warm type of thing, and one feels a little bit cooler, um, some rich jewel tones going into olive, navy, uh, plum, and berry. I think it's a really pretty color scheme, honestly, and this one is the one I more naturally gravitated toward, and this is the kind of the surprise one where I'm like, wow, I like that so much more than I thought, like maybe even more than this one, just because this is a little more common feeling to me. If you look at the swatches, it swatched out really well. Um, I don't really have too much issue with the mattes. The mattes came off, I thought, very rich and true to color, seeming pretty what you see is what you get. There will be some shimmers that feel more like a soft, traditional, shimmery shade, you know, the texture you would expect. And then there are others, like this one right here, you put your finger in, you're like, whoa, Oh, did I just pick up on something different there? And it's that borderline creamy texture, which I'm trying to kind of appreciate it more. I think I was a little annoyed by it in the man eater, but I also found a wet and wild palette that covered so much of what was in that man eater one. I was like, I don't need to put up with this. That was kind of my attitude. But now that I've been playing with these so much, I spent a lot of time with both of these. What I realize is those kind of creamy shades, which in this palette, let me tell you, they're these two, this one here, this one, this one, was this one one of them? Nope, that wasn't. But you know, there's a handful in each that are this kind of like cream feel and you're not 
100% confined to using your finger on those. With enough practice, I've realized like if you are using a nice flat brush, you can apply those shades to the lid with a brush and get some decent payoff, but you will always get more if you apply with the finger. Just the pressure with that swipe of a finger, it's different. You're seeing maximum color in these swatches because guess what? They were all swiped on with my finger, okay? So you're really seeing that pressure get applied to all these shades and they're showing off at their max. Apply with a brush, you might get half that intensity on some of these shimmers that feel a little bit creamy. That's that's the message here. So you've got this palette that's got some beautiful berry richness and a lot of different golden and bronze pops. Is there some overlap in here? Probably. There's a couple of golds that seem really close as I look at those swatches. Shimmery berry colors that are kind of looking pretty close to one another. But all in all, it's a pretty color scheme. And as I look back on looks that I've done with this one, I did one look that worked in you know some of the neutrals, but also a little bit of the rose tone. It felt like almost a rose gold type of eye and I thought that was really pretty. And then just the other day I thought I'll not use the rose so people can see what just a bronzy eye with this looks like. And I thought that actually came off beautifully. The shades looked really pretty. Um, I was able to get smooth blends with everything. I don't think you're seeing a lot of jump off which some people like some jump off and some angular stuff going on. I'm not always all about that. But I did like both the looks that I got. Then jumping over to this other palette so much interesting variety now some of the same things are happening with certain shimmers like I said they feel creamy you get one intensity with a brush you get another level if you put it on with your finger but I love how this palette opened me up to doing a beautiful smoky navy eye you guys have to see the way this one turned out I was so pleased um, smooth smoky perfect amount of blue for me. Okay, perfect amount. And I didn't even use really the matte navy because I don't think I was intending to for it to be this look when I started, but I used like some of this in the crease. This Dusty Rose is great, okay? I see it meshing so well with any of the shades in here. But then on like the outer lid, I used some plum instead of navy, and then I went inward with this and then this. This kind of icy blue, it looks pretty light, but you know, when it's not catching the light, it doesn't look that bright, and it's not too blue. But that looked so pretty layering over the look, and my end result, I just love this sort of blue smokiness, but a little bit of sheen. It was just really fun for me, and then you can get like a berry look up here if you want to do more of what's happening right in this zone, but today I think I'm going to do some olive for you, because I want you to see that angle of it as well. You'll be able to see what I mean about about the application of different things. Um, I need an eye primer on though. We'll use Milani. But I would say I like these palettes. I really do. Um, I think you get a lot for your money. I mean, you're getting two 18 shade palettes. You're getting a lot of variety in each. You could cross over, you know, and use some from both palettes in one sitting if you wanted to. But I kind of like this approach better than one big mega palette. And like I said, the feeling of such nice quality, such solid construction, the feeling of a palette that is more like what they might normally release. To me, it feels like a better buy and a little less overlappy compared to Man Eater After Dark. What did these cost? It's 54 bucks for both of these, just $2 more than one Man Eater After Dark palette. So anyways, we're gonna do some olive. I'm gonna go down here to this kind of like khaki taupe color called Empire. And we're gonna get that going in the crease. I may need to do, come back and do a tutorial with the navy because I've been wanting to actually do a look like that on camera and the shades are perfect in this palette for that. And it's just so much richness here, so much contrast. Okay, so again, we're just sweeping this really cool shade throughout the crease. It's kind of leaving me wanting to add something that's gonna sort of fade out a little bit. I'm gonna take Deco right here, that beige color, and kind of blend over top. Beautiful, beautiful. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of Charm right here which is a really light beige, and that's gonna be pretty just, you know how we like to blur the edge. Really nice for that. Okay, then I'm gonna go down here to graphic, this matte green. I haven't used this before. Oh, wow. Really true to color, what you see is what you get. Not so dark that we can't see the green, and I'm putting that on my, just my whole half, of, outer half of my lid. I love full eye makeup. 
Same shade, but I'm going in with a smaller brush now. And I'm kind of making sure that that green also gets into my crease. I was already wedging it in there with my flat brush, but now I'm really like trying to work it in and slightly up just a little more. Greens can be hard sometimes to make sense of them on the eyes and work them into a look you know, fade them into other colors. But the texture of this is proving to be really, really nice, okay? So you got that kind of army green there. And then I'm gonna wanna work inward with something here. I'm thinking this color called Steel. And this is one of those creamy-ish ones, okay? So I've picked some up with a little flat brush that I can really control. And it's swiping on really nicely. Gosh, it's pretty deep. And I'm finding myself kind of overlapping some of the matte. And I'm, I'm actually pretty good with this intensity. This is building up pretty well. But see how I'm swiping. Notice how I'm not patting. I'm swiping with this sort of borderline creamy feeling shade. And I'm just using my brush here, my small one, to kind of make sure that's getting blended in my crease as well. Also feeling compelled to maybe take a little bit of this shade, this big city color. Dusty Rose, I have loved this. Anytime I've pulled out this palette. Super pretty on the border. That kind of brings it home, you know? Like that makes the green feel at home here. Using a full crease brush and just letting her live right on the outer edge, okay? Next, I'm going to use Rare, which seems to be a real green and gold mix. I'm going to pick some of that up again with a flat brush and work that in. A really murky kind of olive type of shade. That's pretty. So to me, I come away thinking, yes, this is an olive green look, but it's a green I can see. So I'm enjoying my eye look for today. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off, and then we have some other things to talk about as well. The eyes are all finished off with a little liner and mascara, and on the lower lash line, I threw on a little bit of this NYX Epic Smoke Liner in the Nude Haze shade, just because it's the perfect little smudgy, works with anything lower lash line that lasts. I love that. And then we're gonna move on to talking about this lip set. They did something similar last year where essentially they're putting like two two packs in one little container. They have the two from on the back so you could give that to somebody and then give this one to somebody else. What's interesting about this year is that they've thrown in a couple of new formulas. So two of these are the Maracuja Juicy Lips in the classic formula that little like subtle coconutty scent um, sort of sheer very balmy feeling. They still do have some color that shows don't get me wrong but there's there's just a balmy quality to them and and it's the style of product where you click up the bottom, a little bit comes out the top, like a skinny lipstick maybe, but then almost all of that comes off and translates onto the lips. Um, M Cosmetics has something like this called the Lip Cushion, only it's a more opaque lipsticky product, whereas these have more of that balmy feel. So I'll try both of those on, and then just letting you know the other two are different formulas that were both new to me. But this whole thing sells for $39, and you're getting two Two shades of the Maracuja Juicy Lips. Like I said, they're standard formula here, ginger and cranberry. So ginger is going to be your more nude color. Again, you're clicking up the bottom a couple times. You see that product come up a bit, and then it all just kind of melts down onto the lips. End result is this really luxurious feeling balminess, kind of thickness. Ever so slightly, sweet, gentle, coconutty scent that I pick up on there. But there's ginger. Look how it's coming off like a full-on glossy nude. The thickness you feel is that product really coming off of this softened bullet. You know what I mean? You click it up and then that layer of product comes off onto your lips. And so ginger is looking, like I said, really nude. I honestly do like it as is, but I could see myself being extra satisfied with maybe a little bit of liner, better defining that upper lip a little bit, but it's looking good and I think that's a great basic to put in here. But cranberry, y'all, really like cranberry. It's like this product is just sheer enough for me to be okay with wearing a reddish shade in this formula. So a couple of clicks, and you're just gonna feel that all come onto the lips, and it looks like, it's kind of like lip balm and lip gloss in one, because you get so much shine. Yet you also have that kind of precision feel of a skinny lipstick. Look at all that shine. 
and that beautiful color of cranberry. I love that color. This has been my most worn thing out of this entire set so far. That's been the one I wanted to grab for. But we have some fun new formulas. We have the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump, and then there's like a little lipstick type deal. My lips don't mind me trying on this formula over and over. That's nice. So we're hopping over into the other box, and as you can see, the packaging is different. Um, whereas these are just kind of pink, this is rose gold, and it's called Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump in the shade Cherry Blossom. So we're gonna do the same type of thing there with a couple of clicks. You can see we've got this soft pink color and it's gonna feel essentially the same going on. I need another click actually. Are you picking up on that sheer but kind of soft pink? And now that it's applied, I'm feeling a little bit of a tingle, okay? It feels kind of like a buxom product actually is on my lips. Um, it's not like stingy, but it's kind of like a little bit of a cooling sensation. It feels like it's slowly taking over the lips. Are they getting plump? Well, this formula above all else, even just these regular ones, it's so thick, there's a real thickness coming off of this stick. As you click it up, you know, it's all translating onto the lips. And I think all of these make your lips look plumper because they really, truly fill in, you know? They fill in every line. They smooth out everything because the amount of product getting on your lips is probably quite a bit more than your average lipstick. Like I said, a real lip gloss, lip balm type of hybrid thing. So I'm feeling that tingle. I think the lips are looking pretty plump, honestly. This is probably the most sheer shade. I'm getting some soft pink. Again, amp anything up with a lip liner that you want. This past year, I have not been scared to get into my lip liners. My Revlon Colorstay especially, I love those. The last thing here is a Maracuja Juicy Lipstick. So different packaging yet, and no longer are we doing the click up design, okay? This is more like a traditional skinny lipstick, and this is in the shade Rose. So we're looking like lipstick here. We're not feeling so glossy, but we are feeling like a really soft lipstick, okay? There's a softness going across the lips here, a lightness, and very much a what you see is what you get type of look here, right? You're getting exactly what's on the stick, not nearly as shiny as the other products, more like a lipstick, but still the comfort of a balm, I would say. So I like this set, guys, I really do. Um, I thought it was fun to get to try two new formulas that I had never used before. And then a couple things that I really like here in shades that I truly feel like I will wear. And again, the giftable quality of this is really nice, stocking stuffers if you're buying for multiple people. This is one of my picks out of all the Tarte stuff. I do really like these lip colors and I really do like these eye palettes. Um, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed these. I like their compact nature. I like the two different color schemes. I feel like while there are a lot of times that I want this type of look and I've done some really pretty like purpley berry and also just a bronzy eye or mix those two color schemes together, I've been happy with my looks and I just feel like it's a little better value than just getting the man eater after dark because then you get this one and it's like wow some real color variety in deep jewel tones that I'm very comfortable with. So the plums, the navies, the olives, but then light enough contrast. You guys know I'm all about contrast. If we got the dark, we need to have some light to balance it and vice versa. You know, you just don't want one or the other. There's perfect mid-tones in here. There's great, rich, deep mattes coming right around here. The shimmers, like I said, I'm kind of learning to work with those. I'm learning what works. A flat, stiff brush is great. And with some of, especially the lighter shades that are in that borderline creamy texture I mentioned, a finger will give you the most potent look, but I'm so happy with this olive eye. So while I'm here for those palettes and those lip colors, the blush palette, knowing what I know about what else is on the market, this is not a top pick. It's good quality. What they've put in is nice, but this comes with a little asterisk, which is if you're a tan or rich skin tone, several of these blushes I think will be enough for you, but maybe not all of them and definitely not the bronzer. It would have been nice to have seen this in a completely deeper color scheme as well. Maybe keeping a couple of the blushes that worked, but altering some of this, okay? And also this becomes way more versatile if they would throw in a highlighter as well. The blushes are great, but did we need that many? And 
could it have become a little more multitasking with the addition of a highlight? Then it more easily translates to the eyes as well. If you have that highlight in there and you got the bronzer and you got multiple shades of blush, that could double as an eye palette so well. So it's a like, not a love, but it's honestly a love on both of these items. And you got doubles. You could split up the palettes and give one of those to each of your friends and give a set of these to each as well. That would be an amazing gift. I feel like I've talked forever this morning. Thank you so much for watching. Also, my girl Belle was runner-up in the county fair pageant yesterday, and I got to tell you the whole story in a future video, but this was, it was not my idea. It was not my idea to put her in this. I have no experience doing a pageant ever in my life. I mean, I've volunteered and I've like emceed and judged for Miss Illinois, but I've never actually done this stuff, and the fact that she wanted to do it, I was like, oh wow. But she did so well, and she got a trophy, and we're so proud of her, so I'll have to fill you in on how that all came to be. But I've taken enough of your time as is. Thank you for making it this far in the video, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.